All right, this one, pretty quick setup with the bench dogs out. Notice that I am um, under, under the workbench. Sometimes it's easier to pull them out of the bottom. Now here, we've got a large fender washer and it needs to be large enough so that when you put this up, so the fender washers, the fender washer is on the underside of this and the square, the square bolt head is, there's a T-slot, there's a T-slot in there and the bolt head fits right into that T-slot. And so now I'm tightening that underneath. And now what we have is a little more complex tool. With cedar, for what it's worth, like right there is some dried epoxy. Cedar is really easy to dent, so if I'm going to work cedar on a flat surface, I always check and make sure that there's nothing on the woods on the surface that if the cedar gets pressed on top of it, makes a dent in the surface of that cedar. It's one of the many beauties of this white shelf board. If it gets too hacked up or too ridgy, that I start damaging my cedar, I just get a new piece of shelf board. All right, so here is the first piece with my U, and let's work the second piece with the U, and we don't want to dent it with, ah. after a couple years, this one is more than paid for itself. Clamp head is obviously being a teenager here in front of the camera. So I am using a piece of wood here so I'm not denting the top surface with the metal, which obviously is harder. It's kind of the opposite. Here I'm holding the bench dogs were ahead and I was working across the bench dogs. With this particular position, I am holding the Everything is behind me, and so I'm working out ahead of it. But the point is, I've got my hands free, and the plane is now giving me nice, paper-thin, almost see-through shavings, and I am free to work my wood as I see fit. So it, for me, is a close call between the utility and ease of use of this hold-down and the utility of a good set of bench dogs. They're both good, I've got them both, as well as a bunch more of plastic bench dogs that fit in the same hole that I can use to brace uh, even more. This is, well, I wanna say 10 bucks. Maybe Harbor Freight has them. I have some in stock, especially if this is of interest to you paddle makers and you can't find them locally, um, if you, are interested in a kit, this is something that I can add into, a, into the kit so that the bench dogs and the hold down both arrive um, with, with the kit. Just remember that you mark gently both surfaces so that as you go about your business shaping and planing, you are working consistent faces. So when the time comes to mate these, with their chubster shaft, you see that uh, you worked, you worked, there's nothing worse than putting time on the power face on one and the back face of the other, and you get all the way to the part where you wanna join them, you're all excited, and you realize you, you've mismatched your blades. Uh, hello, I've done that once, and after that I made sure to make my pencil marks lightly, so I'm not denting with the pencil, but, it's a lot easier than having to deal with the frustration of mismatched blades. Remember to take your time with a block plane and just tune it. The easiest way I've found is to take a run, 
feel and listen. If, and if there's a lot of resistance, you know, a, a plane should be fairly easy. It shouldn't be a, a two-handed grunt. It should be a one-handed, fairly easy to do. And if that's not possible, it means you've got too much of the blade exposed uh, on the bottom of the plane. So loosen the clamp, turn it a full turn like you saw me do. It's okay if you go too far, but you know, you slowly through time zero in and you have a, a, a blade that's calibrated to the softness of the wood and the strength of your, of your pushing and uh, your level of anxiety and patience too, I guess for that matter. And remember with something like this, um, you've seen me going just in this one direction, always forward towards the point of the blade. I'm willing to bet that if I went backwards, I would get a different response with this pair of blades because I can kind of see the, the growth rings leading me to believe that this direction is going to be the best. If I go the other direction, I'm going to be working into the growth rings and I think I'd be chipping and tearing a lot more. We had that discussion earlier in one of the other videos about trying things both ways and at different angles. To some extent that still applies here, but very lightly and very cautiously, especially on blade edges. So I hope this hold down and the big and the and the dogs make your shaping life easier.